Hi, everybody, and welcome to yet another showcase session. Great to have you with us. I'm Michael Linke, General Manager here at the Australian Institute of Architects. And today, I'm very pleased to welcome Lemonex Australia. And representing Lemonex is Rachel Oakley. Rachel is Lemonex's brand and experience marketing manager based in Melbourne. And she joins me now on the program. Rachel, hi, great to have you with us. Hi, Michael. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here today. So take it away, Rachel. Tell us all about Lemonex. Awesome, I will. Well, um, members, thank you so much for um, tuning in and taking the time to, um, to listen to us today. Um, normally, when we're presenting to you guys, we're talking to you about um, our products, maybe something, a new product range, or we're talking about our products in application for maybe a, a specific kind of commercial space. But today, I kind of wanted to give you a little bit of background more around Laminex behind the scenes. And what are some of those things that drive us and keep us focused? Uh, as a business. So um, to kick start today, I'm going to jump straight in and, uh, and roll you a short video. The Laminex story is one of the iconic Australian success stories. It started in a tin shed down at Brighton at a time when laminates globally were in their infancy. And from there, pretty much single-handedly established the laminates category in Australia. For 85 years, Laminex has been a leader in decorative surfaces. Everywhere you go in Australia, you'll find a connection to Laminex. In homes, schools, hospitals, shopping centres, our highly durable, highly versatile laminates on bench tops and panels. We still manufacture here too, from the suburbs of Melbourne to Ballarat, at Gympie in Queensland and Darden up in WA. Right through the business, we're motivated by this idea of being at the leading edge of design in Australia, always innovating with colour and texture with new production technologies, always pushing the category forward. So that was a really quick overview of, I guess, the things that drive us behind the scenes. And so I'm going to dig into those a little bit more um, with you today. As Justin mentioned, uh, Laminex began all the way back in 1934. That means we're about to celebrate our 90th birthday very, very soon. And so, um, you know, as a company, we've been around for a really long time, but we're still really well known for our decorative laminates uh, and our range of decorated board, which was kind of a heartland, like where we started back in the very beginning. That's still something that's so crucial and critical to us uh, as a business. But what you might not know is that also over that time, we've grown to become one of Australia's largest manufacturers of MDF and particle board. And we've also grown and expanded our product range beyond laminates to include things like engineered stone, acrylic solid surface, uh, and one of our more recent additions is um, a range of decorated MDF wall panels. And so, you know, we're continually looking at our product portfolio beyond the laminates range to make sure that we're offering um, a really well-rounded range of surface solutions to help make specification easier for you guys. Um, another really interesting fact is that in 2002, we became part of Fletcher Building Australia. Essentially, what that means is we've become part of a, a wider group of companies that are responsible for the manufacture and distribution um, of building materials, a really broad range of building materials that suit a, a range of industries across the building and construction industry uh, in Australia. And so it's really great to be part of a bigger family, a, a bigger network of companies where we can learn from each other and we can grow and support together. But if I think more specifically about Laminex, what is it that drives us and what is it that, that really keeps us focused and, and, and keeps us getting up in the morning every day? And I, I think it's that relentless desire to make great design accessible for all Australians. You know, we understand that design has a huge impact on the way that we live, whether that's in our houses, in commercial spaces, in public spaces. Design really impacts how we live and how we experience uh, a space and how we experience life. And so for us, it's really um, something that, that really drives us is that how do we make that great design accessible to everyone? Uh, and so that really keeps us focused in terms of, of our, ongoing, uh, our ongoing development. Many of you uh, watching today would know this brand. You would know our Laminex brand. It is, it's our product range. It's our original product range. And it's also our business brand as well. What you might not know, though, is that um, over the years, we've grown to now include six additional brands in our portfolio. Some of them are also household names in their own right, being Formica, which is also um, a really smart and savvy range of laminates and decorated board. Surround by Laminex is our most recent addition to our portfolio, and that's a range of decorative MDF wall panels. 
We're also the distributor for Hymax acrylic solid surface. We make fusion compact solid surfaces right here in Melbourne. We have our range of engineered stone in Essa Stone and um, a really robust range of building products and commodity range in Trade Essentials. So as you can see, our business, whilst we're known as Laminex and Laminex Laminates, we are so much more than that. Um, and that really is what keeps us focused on being a leader in surface solutions. Laminates really are critical and, and a core part of who we are as a business, but we want to be able to offer the right range of surface solutions to the industry. Um, and what really keeps us focused in that is that we have this ongoing commitment to local manufacturing. It's really critical for us that we stay at the forefront of colour and design. We're really driven by a focus on product innovation beyond colour and texture or beyond colour and design. And that's really all underpinned um, by an ongoing focus to sustainability and reducing our environmental impact. And so what I'm going to do now is just kind of dig into the, each of those a little bit more to give you a bit more of understanding around um, how they influence our business and the products that you guys end up using uh, in the marketplace. We began as an Australian manufacturer way back in 1934. We were Australia's first manufacturer of laminates uh, here in Australia. Um, but that commitment to being local is still as strong for us today as it was back then. And um, one of the interesting things that you may not be aware of is that we are constantly looking at how we can grow our product base to being uh, Australian made. And so we're continually making adjustments and improvements to our manufacturing capabilities so that more and more of our products are made right here in Australia. So products that we might have previously imported or insourced from somebody else, we're expanding our capabilities and our ca uh, capacities in our factories so that we make those right here in Australia. <clears throat> As Justin said in the video at the very beginning, we started in a tin shed in Brighton, Victoria. And uh, over the time, we've expanded to now host seven manufacturing facilities all across Australia. Um, one of our uh, first is uh, in Cheltenham, not far from where we began in Brighton, Victoria. We have six acres in the suburb uh, of Melbourne and in that facility we make our thin laminates and more recently we've also added a compact laminate line to expand our capability and capacity at that site. Uh, in Ballarat, we've got two factories uh, and we've recently celebrated 80 years of operation in Ballarat, which is just such a beautiful moment to, um, to recognise and to acknowledge that we've been a part of the Ballarat community for 80 years. Just, it was a really great time uh, to celebrate together. You might not be aware, but we also have a facility in Ballarat, uh, uh, sorry, in Bathurst. And in Bathurst, we uh, manufacture a range of petitioning systems, lockers uh, and seating uh, equipment. We have two facilities in Gympie. We have Talara and Monkland. And it was a fairly recent acquisition of our Monkland plant. Uh, it's a facility that had been closed down by its previous owner. We were able to purchase that, refire it up and really bring new life back into that factory. And, uh, and I'm really delighted to say that that actually now makes Laminex one of the top three employers in the Gympie region. And last, but definitely not least, is uh, our facility in Dardanelle. So as you can see, our, our manufacturing capabilities stretch all, all the way from the east to the west coast. Um, and, you know, and as I mentioned, we're continually expanding our capabilities and our capacities. Um, it's really important to us that we make our products uh, ourselves more than we would import them. And so we're continually investing in that to develop our expertise and our skills uh, across our team. No surprise, I'm sure, to anybody uh, listening to this uh, presentation is that colour development is a really core part of our business. Um, it's really important that our range stays uh, on trend and that our range is, is delivering the forefront of colour and design. How do we do that? How do we kind of keep abreast of, uh, of what's happening and make sure that our range stays uh, right for right now? Uh, our design and innovation team invest significant time in the development of our ranges and a really key part of that is um, monitoring what's happening globally in terms of culture, colour and design. 
And when possible, our team uh, are visiting overseas to actually see firsthand what's happening. They're meeting with our suppliers. They're attending fairs like Milan. In fact, some of our team just returned from uh, Milan last week. Very jealous. Uh, but a really great opportunity for them to be able to see globally what's happening and to also connect with you, the community as well, around what's what's really grabbing your attention and what you see as, uh, as that future focus of the industry. Once we've done that kind of global analysis and we're continually keeping our eye on what's happening globally, it's really important that we then localise that and make that relevant for the Australian marketplace and the Australian way of life. We're not the same as Europe. We're not the same as America. It's really important that we take those trends and we turn those into something that's really relevant for us. And so we're often asking ourselves, you know, like what colours are we seeing that are familiar to us? What do we see happening around us? And what is it that brings us comfort here in the local market? You know, one of those things is that we're seeing, um, you know, globally, we're seeing that trend of the desire to connect with the outdoors, to bring nature inside, to feel that comfort and the security that comes from that. And, uh, and so we know that the Australian landscape is different to the landscape that we're seeing, you know, around the world. And so it's really important that we take those trends that we're seeing globally, we bring those back to Australia and we're localising those to represent our environment and what we're seeing and some of those uniqueness, the unique uh, elements uh, to the Australian uh, landscape. In terms of material development, um, what's really important here is that it's about how materials work with other materials. We don't ever select a colour or a product in isolation. We know that we're, we are a part of a wider material selection process. And so, you know, we're often looking at things like what's happening in terms of the paint, in, paint industry, you know, hardware, flooring, textiles, and even fashion, because we need to make sure that we're connecting to whatever else is, is happening around us. And so it's, it's bringing all of those things together that drive and influence the, the decors and the colours that you're seeing come into our range. If we think about colour continuity, it's really important that we understand what's working and what's not. We'll bring new colours on um, and we'll have colours that have been on range for a long time, but that doesn't mean that they stay with us forever. But it takes some time for us to assess whether something is working or not, whether it's something we should keep or not keep. Um, it is a lengthy and it is a long decision. For something like the commercial industry, it can take us up to two years to understand whether a colour was really right and whether it was fit for purpose. And that's because we need to allow time for the design concept, specification and the build to take place. And we know that there's a, there is longevity in some of those processes. On the flip side of that, the residential market, probably more the renovation side rather than the new build, but particularly in renovation, that's where we can see what's picking up from a residential perspective quite quickly. And it can be something as quick as six to 12 weeks where we can understand whether colour is getting adopted and getting the take up that we were expecting. So really big differences in terms of the residential and the commercial segments. But the sustainability of colour is also really important to us. And that's probably best explained as a colour that would work across multiple segments. We don't want to just have a range for residential and have a, a separate range for commercial. We really want to have uh, one quality range that services both markets, that allows us to generate more volume from fewer colours, that allows us to drive better efficiencies in manufacturing, but also to have a range that's much easier for you to select from and to specify. And also what's important to that is that they need to be decors that stand the test of time. <clears throat> in order to do that, we have um, this kind of balance, this delicate balance in our range of making sure that we've got what we would call volume colours and what we would have um, called niche colours or more those accent uh, colours. And it's also important that those colours stand the test of time, I guess, in terms of trends. You know, we see trends shift over time. You know, we're just moving now from a phase where cooler grey tones have been really critical um, as a part of our design focus, whereas now it's moving into richer, warmer tones. And so we need to have a range that can move with those trends and can move with the design concepts that, that you are developing. One of the really interesting things that we see, particularly in terms of sustainability of colour and colours that stand the test of time, is that colours that might have kind of just been hiding in the shadows for the last few years, as trends begin to evolve, find new life and find new popularity. And one of those colours is Laminex Milkwood. It's not a solid colour, it's actually a wood grain. And we've noticed a real resurgence in that colour of recent times. And that's because it's really correlating to where design trends are heading at the moment. 
but you pair an older colour such as Laminex Milkwood with one of our newer neutral colours, French Cream, which is a really warm, neutral tone. And all of a sudden, the two together, the old with the new, bring fresh life and bring fresh vitality to something um, that's been around for a really long time. And so there, there are a lot of the things that we look at in terms of bringing colour on board and making sure that our old and our new really complement each other. We do have some rules around what we bring on to a range. We need to make sure that a new colour works back with, you know, not just our range of laminates, but our range of stone or solid surface so that we've got this real solutions focus to, um, to what we're bringing to market so that it is sustainable and that it will stand the test of time. Whilst colour is really important to us and probably something that Laminex as a brand is really well known for, product innovation is also really at the heart of what we do and making sure that we're staying at the forefront of technology and innovation and bringing you the best products that we can beyond colour, but really focusing in on texture as well and functionality, I should say. One of those is um, a technology called InvisiTouch. Uh, InvisiTouch features across our range of absolute matte laminates. And um, whilst we launched this innovation a number of years ago, I'm sure many of you watching today have never heard of InvisiTouch. And so that's why we wanted to do a presentation like this is to give you a little bit more of the detail that sits behind us. Um, and so InvisiTouch technology is something that we've been able to introduce into this range through the use of new manufacturing technology, which we've sourced from overseas and brought back into Australia. We're really um, proud to be making this product right here in our factory in Cheltenham. Um, and it's through the use of a premium foil that has been treated with electron beans that has given the product this extra resilience without compromising on its um, matte kind of textural finish. Our absolute matte range is this really gorgeous, soft, luxe matte texture that's very on trend at the moment. But we've been able to bring that to market without compromising its, um, its functionality. So this, you know, InvisiTouch technology, this electro beam treated foil, what does it do? It gives superior scratch and fingerprint resistance to the product. And when you look at the trends that we're seeing um, at the moment in terms of color selection for darker colors and for really richer, stronger, more chromatic pigment, highly pigmented colors, a product that um, gives you that extra benefit of fingerprint resistance is really critical. It allows you to achieve the aesthetic that you're looking for, but not compromise on livability or functionality. Um, and that's what this product, Absolute Matte, and this technology in VisiTouch allows you to do. Um, I will just say, though, it, whilst it is fingerprint resistant, that doesn't mean you don't need to clean it. You do still need to clean and maintain the surface. But what Invisi te uh, Touch technology does is that it has an inbuilt resistance to those natural oils that are within our skin and within our fingers. And so, um, you know, that day to day wear and tear on the product um, or that, you know, day to day, you know, dirt and grime that might appear or fingerprinting that might appear it's less obvious than it would be on other surfaces that you might be using. And so essentially this product is gonna stay looking pristine and beautiful for longer. If I flip to the other complete side of the textural finish is, um, is what's happening in terms of gloss technology. Um, we've spent a really long time looking for this solution. And whilst, you know, Matt is having a real moment at, the mo uh, at present, you know, two pack finishes are still very popular with a lot of um, with a lot of industries. And what this product allows us to do, the introduction of our absolute gloss range, is that through the use of new manufacturing technologies again that we've sourced, we're able to get the look and feel of a two pack finish, but with the durability and all the functionality that you would expect from a range of laminates. Um, we've spent a long time finding uh, this solution, and it's essentially a, a polypropylene product or film that's highly reflective and it delivers a durable, cost-effective alternative to two-pack joinery. And so, um, again, another solution that you might not be aware of that's in our market uh, that we've been able to engineer right here in Australia. Taking a little bit of a different spin again in terms of what's happening in terms of product innovation, and that's really looking more at the wood grain textural treatment that, um, that's developing. Uh, Laminex Pure Grain is another product that we've we've launched in more recent times, and again has has been a result of us really adopting you know some of the world leading production technology uh, right here in Australia. And this product, as you can see from that video that's playing on your left there, um, is we've been able to emulate the look of painted timber 
or painted timber veneers really. But again, with all of the benefits that you would get from a laminate in terms of durability and functionality, um, you know, this is a really, it's, it's strikingly authentically wood grain look and finish. And it's created using this zero gloss detailing that really helps to give you that visualization and texture on the surface that you would be looking for. So that's uh, Laminex Pure Grain. Not so new, but definitely relevant in terms of the times in which we find ourselves. So I really wanted to bring this to your attention today, but another technological advancement that we've really um, owned and engineered uh, over time here is something called Protect Plus, and it's an antimicrobial technology. Um, it is essentially um, an, an addition to our range of uh, high pressure laminates. So whether that's our natural chalk, nuance finish, it's also across our absolute uh, mat range of high pressure laminates and our multi-purpose compact laminates. All of those great products that we make right here in Australia, those products that we make here um, ourselves have been engineered to have this addition uh, to the product, which essentially inhibits the growth of bacteria and fungus. It fights the spread of germs. So whether that's for our homes or our commercial spaces, I'm sure you'd all agree that that's a really great product feature and benefit that we should be considering um, and might be, be something worthwhile considering for your next project. Sustainability. We know that sustainability and, and awareness of our environmental impact is really at the heart of this industry and something that's really important to all of you. And it's important to us as well. Sustainability on many levels is, um, is really key, but we're also really committed to achieving the highest standards of ethical behaviour and conduct across our business and our activities. Um, and as a member of Fletcher Building, uh, there are a range of policies that are applied to our business as well. And so we wanted to let you know about that today. And they sit across human rights, modern slavery, inclusion and diversity. And so if you want to access those policies at all, they are available through our website. Um, and so feel free to take a visit and download those. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us around that. <clears throat> we value cultural diversity and we really want to celebrate the rich multicultural heritage that is Australia. And we, as a result of that, you know, we do, we acknowledge that we live and we work on the traditional lands of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples across Australia, and we pay our respects to their elders past and present. From a manufacturing perspective, obviously as a local manufacturer, we place a really high importance uh, on best practices across manufacturing uh, and building. And our team are really uh, focused on continuing to support and maintain our certification across forest management and global green tag certification. You know, we've been um, really actively working for many years to create products that reduce our environmental impact. We really paved the way many, many years ago with a range called Green First, where we introduced E-Zero Board and really, um, really drove its acceptance and, and pushed it throughout the industry. And since then, you know, we've really continued to work um, over more recent years around reducing our carbon footprint and incorporating ethically sourced materials into our manufacturing processes. We've re-engineered a lot of our systems to eliminate, you know, potential hazards and uh, toxins in our manufacturing processes at all of our local manufacturing facilities. Since the early 2000s, we've worked really significantly to reduce the levels of solvents in our water-based resins, which are used to create our range of laminates. Um, and we've done that so much so that to the extent that they're now classified as non-flammable. And our water-based resins and our water-based cleaning systems are, of course, now um, operating at the standard, um, at international standards. Um, we're really proud of, um, of, our, um, of our work uh, in this space. And we, of course, continue to really focus in on how can we continue to bring, bring best practice uh, into our facilities and really have a conscious focus on how we're going to reduce our environmental impact. In, uh, in 2020, very recently, Laminex became the first and only Australian manufacturer to achieve um, CARB2 certification on our MDF products. For many people within the industry, it just provides that further assurance that they're using a material that contributes to, contributes, sorry, to, to healthier indoors, um, not only for their users, but for anybody that's also working with those products through the installation and the fabrication uh, phases. 
Um, this is a, you know, it's a certification specifically for the US and we've done this um, in conjunction or, you know, in correlation with some of our key customers who were looking for a product that had this level of certification. And so it was really great to be able to work with and to partner with industry to be able to achieve this certification out of our Talara factory uh, in Gympie. And, um, and this is just one of a number of initiatives that our Gympie um, uh, plant, uh, Talara in uh, Gympie, has uh, been implementing to really uh, focus in on our environmental impact. A couple of other of those initiatives have really been focused in around maximizing um, our efficiencies and minimizing our waste. In particular, having a real focus on how do we reduce the waste of our product once it's gone to market. And we knew that MDF cutoffs from a number of our customers were going into landfill. Um, and so, uh, so what we've been trialing and, um, and implementing throughout Queensland is a recycling program where we take those offcuts back from our customers. They get fed back into our production process where they're used as um, a import to heat our plants. Um, and so that's twofold effect in a positive way for us in that there's less material when I go into landfill, but we're also using less natural resources to power our plants. You know, this is just one uh, recycling initiative that has come off the back of a number of other energy efficiency uh, initiatives that we've been putting in place in Talara over the last couple of years so that we are actively reducing our carbon footprint and actively reducing our, um, our need for natural resources to power our plants. Another really exciting initiative that's in play at the moment is that we're in the process of conducting a feasibility study for a cogeneration plant um, at uh, Talara. Uh, now that cogeneration plant will be um, fueled by biomass, more specifically the branches and the other parts of plantation pine that's often left on the forest floor once they've been harvested. Plantation pine is obviously a really core input for us. And so to be able to kind of go back to um, the source of our product and take what's left and really use that wisely um, is a really exciting opportunity for us. So to be able to use that as biomass to power our plants would significantly reduce the plant's uh, demand for electricity from the grid uh, and, of course, would significantly uh, reduce our carbon footprint. This is a project that's in place at the moment and uh, our ambition is to have this up and running by late later this year or early next year. So, um, so stay tuned for more information around that. You know, these are just a couple of examples of, of the things that we've got going on, on across our seven plants. Um, uh, but there really is, and I hope that this really demonstrates to you that there really is a commitment for us as a business to be a responsible manufacturer and to really have a focus in around how we're going to reduce our environmental impact in the long term more and more each year. Just as I wrap up, I really wanted to just highlight some ways in which that, that we are here to be able to help you and to help make your life easier in the development of your projects. Um, and so just to draw your attention to a couple of things you might not be aware of, at laminex.com.au, we've got the ability for you to sign up for a specifier account. What that gives you is it gives you access to um, free sample ordering. So more than you would get through just logging into the site to be able to have a look, you can order larger samples um, and, and higher volumes. It's also some simple and easy access to some technical information and certification that you might need for your project documentation. We're also just recently launched a new function called the My Projects tool. What this does is this, this really helps you easily select products knowing that they're fit for purpose in terms of application. The tool also helps you really easily generate your specification and supporting documentation. It then saves it in the system into a dashboard so you can go back and check in on any of those at any point in time, make amendments, re-download the documentation that you might need and it packages it all, packages it all up for you uh, into one simple and easy uh, to use file. We've also got a national availability guide that's been souped up and reinvented. This is a comp comprehensive, but it's an interactive product reference guide for all of our brands and all of our products. So if you're ever questioning um, product availability, where is it available, what sheet size, um, finishes, et cetera, this is your one-stop shop to being able to understand that and unpack that. And that's available at laminex.com.au to download. And inspiration is another really kind of key part of the process and through both our website and through our social media, if you're looking for new ideas and new ways to use our product or you're wanting to understand how you can fabricate it and design with it, what are its limitations or capabilities, 
all of that information is available on laminex.com.au. And I really want to say thank you to all of you who do share and tag your projects with us through social media or you email them through your Laminex rep. We love seeing them. They are a great source of inspiration to us as well. We're able to, to reshare a lot of that and, and share your work to inspire industry. We love how you're using our product. We love seeing the ways in which you're using it in, in ways that we would never have imagined. So Thank you for sharing them and we just want to encourage you to continue to share them with us and to tag us through social media. We love seeing what you're doing. So um, thank you so much for your time today. I hope that's been uh, interesting and informative. Um, and yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you very much, Rachel. Great to have that presentation from you. I've Look, throughout the presentation, I've just written down a number of questions, if that's okay. First of all, are all of your products manufactured in Australia? Yeah, look, that's a really great question, Michael. Um, I didn't mention the exact uh, percentage, but 97% of our range is now made here in Australia, and that's growing each year. Um, like I mentioned, we are continually adding to our capabilities uh, and, our, uh, and our capacities here, and so uh, expect that to be even higher in the days to come. We've got some other exciting initiatives coming where we'll be in, uh, insourcing even more of our, our product range. So 97%. Yeah, you, you, that's uh, tantamount, close to 100%. So that's uh, that's fantastic. Look, are all of your technological advancements uh, made and designed here in Australia or are they made overseas? Yeah, you know, that's a really good question. Um, I'm going to say that it's, it's a combination, really. Um, our product development team and our R&D team work really closely uh, with our international suppliers, both from material inputs point of view and also from a I guess an equipment manufacturing equipment perspective it's it's about staying across both of those those elements and sometimes we might have an idea that we're like we really want to find a way to be able to create create this product um, and so we'll work really closely with them in terms of the development and sometimes we're seeing things happening globally that we're like we really want to connect with that but we want to localize that and bring that to Australia and so I think it's really probably, uh, it is, it's a combination. Sometimes it's, it's definitely led by us and sometimes it's led by our overseas uh, partners, but it's very much about working hand in hand so that we can localise that and bring that technology and that capability uh, from a manufacturing perspective right here into Australia. We've recently, especially in the architectural profession, witnessed a massive resurgence from Laminex into the market. Uh, are you able to pinpoint, say, the, the moment this happened and, and how that came to fruition? Yeah, it's a really good observation. And I'm going to say I think it's twofold. Um, I think it initially began back in 2018, 2019, when we uh, launched a really extensive overhaul to our range of laminates uh, and decorated board. Uh, if I'm honest, the range hadn't had a lot of love for a number of years and it was really tired and probably quite outdated and had, had lost its relevance, I think, to the market. Um, and so our product team worked for two years tirelessly to really redefine and reset that range. They re looked at everything. They pulled it all apart and put it back together, everything from whites and neutrals to wood grains, minerals, and some of our more accent colours. And, you know, that was really to make sure that we didn't just have the right colour, but that we had the right finish. Uh, as well available and so I think the first step in that resurgence was about making sure we had the right product offer for the market um, and then I think it's kind of then what we did with it from there was we really genuinely believed as a team that we didn't just need to have the right range but we really needed to reconnect with industry again and show them how great it could look in application and so we've done that through a few ways and one of them um, probably more recently was that we just really accelerated and boosted our presence in the market by collaborating with some of the, the industry's leading architects and designers, probably more notably and more, more recently, Kennedy Nolan uh, and YSG. And we partnered with them to say, hey, here's this new range that, that we've created. Show us what you do with it. Show us, uh, show us how you would design it. And I think what they've done through that is that they've really challenged the design capabilities of the product. They've really reimagined it and used it in ways that, to be honest, even we probably hadn't imagined or foreseen. And I think that that's really kind of sparked a resurgence for, for the, the category as well. It's really made people uh, or the industry reconsider Laminate as a category and Laminex probably as, as the brand to go to. And, and we're, I think we're really loving where, where industry is taking it in terms of colour selection, but also in terms of application. Great stuff. Thanks, Rachel. Look, how important is, say, local manufacturing in relation to product development at Laminex? 
Yeah, you know, I, I think it's a really imperative part um, of our product development phase because um, it really ensures that we can have the right products and the best products for the Australian market. You know, we are unique, you know, uh, down here in Australia. We have, uh, you know, a huge range of different cultures within our communities, lots of different trends and design styles. Um, we have a unique way of living, I think, as well. We also have a really unique environment around us. And so, um, being able to make our own products here really means that we can make products um, that not only visually and textually are right, but that are uh, designed to perform to Australian standards as well. And, and being a local manufacturer really gives you that flexibility to tailor something specifically for this market right here. My final question, it's almost two questions, if that's okay. Are you seeing the use of laminate changing. You talked about, you know, your collaboration with people like Kennedy Nolan Architects, but are you seeing the use of laminate changing? And I suppose, how has it maintained its relevance over such a long and illustrious history? Yeah, they're really good questions. Um, I think in terms of relevance, it's really, uh, I think that it really depends too on, on the generational shift as well. You know, I think that there's been a couple of jobs there for us to do uh, as a business. You know, if, you know, you grew up with the green and orange laminate bench top, then we've probably had to work a little bit harder with you to demonstrate and, uh, and prove that it's a range that's as relevant today as it was back then. Um, but equally, we're, we love seeing this whole new generation of homeowners and architects and designers coming through who have no prior connection to laminates or to the laminates range. You know, they're the generation that's grown up with engineered stone. And um, so it's been really great to be able to introduce this brand to them and to um, really see how they've responded uh, and adapted to, uh, to the product. I think in terms of use, yeah, I think we're definitely seeing some changes in the way that the, the product uh, is being utilised. We see a lot of use of our range now in cabinetry. You know, like two pack has had, a, you know, is still really popular, but we're definitely seeing a really strong use of our, our, our product across cabinetry. Um, but more so really going beyond the whites and the neutrals, like this really beautiful introduction of, of green tones uh, and even blue is really coming through now as, as like a really strong colour play in cabinetry. And so we're definitely seeing a shift in terms of how people are using the colour that they're selecting. I think one of the other things is the use of what we probably call coloured carcass or, you know, inner cabinetry and just the ability to do something different on the inside other than whiteboard to add a real sense of personalisation or um, a really uh, elevated take on a space. You know, you might have white cabinetry on the outside, but you open it up inside and there's this really beautiful blonde wood grain finish inside. It just, it elevates it and just adds a whole nother level of premiumness to the space. And we're definitely seeing a lot of that come through now, um, both in residential and commercial applications. And probably the other big one is curves. Um, you know, and that's one of the great things about our thin high pressure laminates um, is that you can curve them, but you've got the durability and the strength of the product kind of behind that as well. And so we've definitely seen that come through really strongly through our collaborations with Kennedy Nolan and with YSG. Probably more recently, um, just some content that we've released with CJH Studios where it's just curves, curves and more curves. And definitely even some of the conversations in the background with Kennedy Nolan and with YSG was just their desire to kind of reinvent the bull nose, you know, which was kind of the daggy thing back from, you know, the seventies and the eighties, but they've really brought a modern take back to that um, and using it in ways beyond the bench top as well, you know? And so I think that's what we're, you know, we're loving seeing just how the product is being reinvented to really align to where trends and design is at right now. Mm. Oh, well, that's great, Rachel. Thanks so much uh, for answering all of my questions. And thanks very much for that really fascinating presentation. It's amazing to see the evolution of Laminex really coming back into the design forefront um, over recent years. And uh, good luck to you as you move forward. So that's it from this showcase session. A massive thanks to you, Rachel Oakley, our brand and, marketing, our brand and experience marketing manager at Laminex Australia. Thanks very much for joining me. It's been great to have you with us. Thanks, Michael. And thanks, members, for tuning in today. No worries at all. Great to have you with us. And of course, don't forget, there are plenty of other showcase uh, sessions to choose from. As always, I'm Michael Linky here at the Australian Institute of Architects. Thanks very much for joining me. Look forward to seeing you at another showcase session very soon. Take care.